In this video, we're going to have a look at configuring incoming and outgoing email. So to do this, once again, we start with central admin, and this is a system wide set of settings. So I can go to system settings. Here I have under email and text messages, three main settings, outgoing email, incoming email, and then SMS access as well. So we can actually send text messages if we bought such a web service, perhaps. So let's start off with outgoing email settings. These are perhaps the easiest to configure. If I have an available SMTP server, if I want to be able to subscribe to any alert or any email based things such as a workflow or things like that, then I need to have already specified and configured an SMTP server somewhere. Now I've configured on the same server running our database server, an SMTP application that we can use just as a stub to receive incoming SMTP messages. I should be able to put the machine name of my SQL server here, and that can then receive outgoing messages. So that's W2012 SQL, and it'll be port 25 as usual. And the outbound from address can be SharePoint at contoso.local, and maybe a reply to of SharePoint admin at contoso.com. And simple as that, that's outbound email configured. So now I can start a new tab and sign in as a normal user and go to our intranet and we can try and receive an email. If I go to big list, here I can now ask to receive an alert whenever anything happens. And that should trigger an email to be sent to spadmin at contoso.local. Now, we may not have a mailbox configured anywhere to do that, but hopefully my little SMTP program running on our database server will pick that up anyway. So let's say OK. And now we can try this out. We can try this out by adding a new item. A new list item from Joel. And let's hit save. There we go. So let's see if that's worked. I'm now going to head over to our database server. And in my system tray, I have SMTP for dev, which is just an SMTP test tool. If I open this up, we can see I've received just now a new list item from Joel. Hooray. Let's open this up. And if I had something like Outlook or Outlook Express, I could double click on this and open it up in that. But here's the raw text of our email new list from Joel. So now our SharePoint server can send messages properly. The next step really would be to configure perhaps outbound SMS messages. If I went to the Microsoft Office Online SMS provider list, I could pay to have a service that will let me send SMS messages. And that will result in a URL that I need to paste in here, and an account username and password, and that's how they can bill me per SMS. Having configured those, I just hit OK. And from here on in, when users want to be alerted about things, they can also be alerted via text message. Lastly, we're going to have a look at configuring incoming email settings. And first of all, it notices that we don't have SMTP service installed. So we need to have SMTP service installed if we're going to have a meaningful incoming email stream somewhere. And the first shock really is that SharePoint can receive email messages. What's that about? Well, this allows users to say, hey, for this library, I would like to have a, a public facing perhaps email address that people can use to send attachments to this document library. So we can send files via email. That's useful for public facing scenarios where we don't allow anonymous users maybe to save stuff into libraries or even records management scenarios where we have a large repository of records that we would like to add to by email instead of uploading documents by hand. So my choice is here, if I just OK this dialog out the way, do I allow incoming email or not? So let's say yes to that. And I have a choice down here to use the SharePoint directory management service or not. If not, then I can just have it monitor an incoming drop folder for received SMTP messages. If I had just configured SMTP server in IIS, then I could have this monitor this location here. And however an email message got to that SMTP server, SharePoint would now look in that folder for an incoming .eml or suitable file and read that in, parse the to address and figure out which library that needs to head off to. 
Incidentally, lists or libraries can be suitable targets for this. For instance, I can have a calendar list where I can send invites and similar. So if I say no, then it's going to monitor the drop folder and that's about it. If I say yes, then I get something far more interesting. This will require something like Exchange Server to assist with the sending of the email. So imagine you're using Exchange Server, which is a common scenario with SharePoint. You have Exchange Server as your incoming email server. What we'd like to do maybe is allow SharePoint to create contacts within Active Directory that Exchange will honor. So maybe name of my list at sharepoint.contoso.com. So for that to happen, we need to be granted write permission on a suitable organizational unit within AD. And that's got to be one that our Exchange admin guy then allows as a effectively a send target, a routing rule for Exchange to look at and say, oh, there's an incoming email message. Does it match something at sharepoint.contoso.com? If so, if it's one of those contacts, now forward it to our SMTP server in SharePoint. So one of our SharePoint servers running SMTP. So what I can figure here is the organizational unit. So let's copy and paste this in and pretend that this is going to be granted permission from our Exchange administrator. And then the SMTP mail server for incoming email will be something like this, mysharepointserver.contoso.local. Next, are we only going to allow authenticated messages? That would be from users inside SharePoint or Exchange. If we want it to be from publicly anonymous users from the internet, then we can say no to this. And that means that anybody can email us, even if it's an outside user from another company. Then do we allow creation of distribution lists from SharePoint sites, yes or no? And then we have these finer grain permissions to create a new distribution group, to create a group email address, a distribution group title and description, and the ability to delete groups after we've finished with them. Then what's going to be our display address? So probably something like SharePoint contoso.com probably not just contoso.com that would probably allow too much pollution of that namespace but rather than do that let's have a special subdomain that we're going to have for sharepoint to use for its incoming email and then the location of the drop folder that's used by our local smtp server on this sharepoint server and then okay so that's not going to work for me we don't have exchange configured we don't have an exchange server running anywhere but this is what i would need to configure Use remote, on the other hand, allows me to specify a SharePoint server, which we've already configured. So I can have one incoming SharePoint server for all of my incoming SMTP email. Cancel our way out of that. Actually, let's just say no, and we'll have it monitoring this folder, which I should probably make sure exists. So now I have a suitable folder, I can say OK. The point of this is as a SharePoint list owner, for instance, this document library, I could now go to library settings and under communications, I have incoming email settings. Here I could say, let's me invent an email address for this. So my docs at sharepoint.contoso.com. And then how should it save this stuff? How should it save the actual attachments? Or should it save the entire email message? And so on. And should I accept from any sender or only people who have permission to save in this library? If I just compare that with a custom list, by the way, if I go to list, list settings, custom lists don't have the ability to allow incoming emails. However, other kinds of lists do. So if I go to for instance, a calendar list. Let's just create a calendar list. Although this is a list type, I can still receive incoming email. And this would be maybe to have an invite sent using an internet standard iCal message. So in this video, we've looked at configuring outgoing email settings, incoming email settings, and also the mobile account settings too. This ends the video.